Hello, welcome to Evening Prayer for Tuesday, the 13th of October. Uh, today we remember a king, Edward the Confessor. Edward the Confessor uh, owned a lot of land in the Redditch area. And so in that sense, you could say he's the saint that we're most closely associated with. Now, he was a king. He wasn't a man who had devoted himself to a religious life. He was certainly a prayerful person, but he wasn't a massively perfect one. He was a creature of his time. But what he did do was choose how he spent his money. He chose to spend it on Westminster Abbey. He chose to spend it not just on riches for himself, on great works of art, or jewels or menageries, or the sorts of things that kings could have used to display their power, but to spend it on God's church. Now, people can say, oh, well, yes, he was demonstrating his, his power and prestige and all that sort of stuff. But he could have done it in other ways. Let's not forget that and not despise the money that was given. Nor indeed we despise any of the money that was given to build the churches of the past. And particularly once we get later into the Middle Ages and the latest things in architecture were being built into our churches. So, today, let's pray that business people, media sensations and other people of tremendous wealth will choose to use it in the service of the Lord Jesus Christ and of his church. One thing I have asked of the Lord this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his house of prayer. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We're reading a section from Psalm 89. Beginning at verse 19. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set a youth above the mighty. I have raised a young man over the people. I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. My hand shall hold him fast and my arm shall strengthen him. No enemy shall deceive him nor any wicked person afflict him. I will strike down his foes before his face and beat down those that hate him. My truth also and my steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name shall his head be exalted. I will set his dominion upon the sea and his right hand upon the rivers. He shall call to me, You are my Father, my God and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him my firstborn, the most high above the kings of the earth. The love I have pledged to him will I keep for ever. My covenant will stand fast with him. His seed also will I make to endure for ever, for ever, and his throne as the days of heaven. But if his children forsake my law and cease to walk in my judgments, if they break my statutes and do not keep my commandments, I will punish their offences with a rod and their sin with scourges. But I will not take from him my endless love, nor suffer my truth to fail. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. We continue with our readings in two chronicles, and we're reading about godly King Jehoshaphat. Now Jehoshaphat had great riches and honour, and he made a marriage at Lands with Ahab. After some years he went down to Ahab in Samaria, 
they have slaughtered an abundance of sheep and oxen for him and for the people who are with him, and induced him to go up against Ramoth Gilead. King Ahab of Israel said to King Jehoshaphat of Judah, Will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? He answered him, I am with you. My people are your people. We will be with you in the war. But Jehoshaphat also said to the king of Israel, Inquire first for the word of the Lord. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, 400 of them, and said to them, Shall we go to battle against Ramoth Gilead, or shall I refrain? They said, Go up, for God will give it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there no prophet of the Lord here, of whom we may inquire? The king of Israel said, Jeho said to Jehoshaphat, There is still one other of whom we may inquire of the Lord, Micaiah son of Imlah, but I hate him. For he never prophesies anything favourable about me, only disaster. Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say such a thing. Then the king of Israel summoned an officer and said, Bring quickly Micaiah, son of Imlah. Now, the king of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah were sitting on their thrones, arrayed in their robes. And they were sitting at the threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah, son of Chenaah, made for himself horns of iron and he said thus says the Lord with these you shall gore the Arameans until they are destroyed all the prophets were prophesying the same and saying go up to Ramoth Gilead and triumph the king will give it into the hands so the Lord will give it into the hands of the king the messenger who had gone to summon Micaiah said to him look the words of the prophets, with one accord, are favourable to the king. Let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak favourably. But Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever my God says, I will speak. When he came to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah! Shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall I refrain? He answered, Go up and triumph, they will be given into your hand. But the king said to him, How many times must I make you swear to tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then Micaiah said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains like sheep without a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each one go home in peace. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy anything favourable about me, but only disaster? Then Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne with all the host of heaven standing to the right and to the left of him. And the Lord said, Who will entice King Ahab of Israel so that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said one thing and another said another until a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. The Lord asked him, How? He replied, I will go up and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all the prophets. Then the Lord said, You are to entice him and you succeed. Go out and do it. So you see, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of these your prophets. The Lord 
has decreed disaster for you. Then Zedekiah, son of Chenanah, came up to Micaiah, slapped him on the cheek and said, Which way did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? Micaiah replied, You will find out on that day when you go to hide in an inner chamber. The king of Israel then ordered, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and say to Joash, the king's son, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him on reduced rations of bread and water until I return in peace. Micaiah said, if you return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Hear you peoples, all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I bind unto myself the name, the strong name of the Trinity, by invocation of the same, the three in one and one in three, of whom all nature has creation, eternal Father, Spirit, Word, Praise to the Lord of my salvation. Salvation is of Christ the Lord. Great and wonderful are your deeds, Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O ruler of the nations. Who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord? For you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, for your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Amen. We hold before God those who lead the nations, who have immense responsibility before God and human beings. Whatever they have been, Lord, guide them to a better place, inform their decisions and help them to bow the knee to you. We hold before God those for whom life is very difficult, those who have difficult decisions to make and who honestly do not know the right thing to do. We hold before God those who have difficult people to work with, those who suffer unfair treatment, unjust criticism, unappreciated work. We hold before God those who have difficult tasks to do and to face and fear that they may fail in them, those who have difficult temptations to face and who know only too well that they may fall to them if they try to meet them alone. We hold before God those who know they can be their own worst enemies, we hold before God for those who are sad because someone they loved has died. Many who are disappointed in something for which they hoped for very much. We hold before God for those who are alone and isolated and don't have anyone to talk to. We hold before God for those who do, that their words may be sweet and lovely and upbuilding. We come to the collect for today. Sovereign Lord, you sent your servant Edward upon the throne of an earthly kingdom and inspired him with zeal for the kingdom of heaven. Grant that we may so confess the faith of Christ by word and deed, that we may, with all your saints, inherit your eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.